Hello everyone. Are you tired of wrestling with complex kubectl commands? You wish there was a more user-friendly way to manage your clusters? Let me show you K9S, a powerful terminal UI that takes a byte out of Kubernetes. In this video, I will show you how to install the tool. We'll explore the impressive arsenal of features like visualizing resources or executing commands. I will show you how to navigate through resources filter for specific information and take control of your cluster with just a few keystrokes. Buckle up and get ready to supercharge your Kubernetes management with K9S. Let's get started by installing the binary. First, I will grab the most uh, recent release from GitHub. Then I will unpack the archive now let's move the application to USR local bin for easier access. Finally, we can kick off the application. Keep in mind that K9S utilizes the same configuration file as kubectl and offers a range of functionalities. I will begin by demonstrating how to navigate around and later we'll explore what else K9S can do. In the top left corner, you will find basic connection information, including the Kubernetes context, cluster name, and username extracted from the context. Additionally, you will see the K9S version and the Kubernetes version running on the connected cluster. Below that, you will find CPU and memory utilization details for the cluster. On the right side, there's a helpful panel offering hints on the available key bindings in the current view. For more comprehensive list, you can press the question mark key. You can exit the current panel by pressing the escape key. Alternatively, to hide the panel entirely, use Ctrl E. In the center, you will find the main pane displaying our resources. At the top, you will see information about the type of resource being displayed along with the item count. Currently, we are viewing the deployments. You can navigate within this pane using arrow keys. Once you selected a resource of interest, you can drill down further by pressing enter. It will bring me to pods associated with the Alpine deployment. Pressing enter again takes me to the container level. To return to our deployment, simply press the escape key twice. From there, you can perform actions such as rescaling the deployment by pressing S, followed by entering the desired replica count, for example, 3. Our deployment is being scaled up. Now uh, that we scaled our deployment, let's verify that by viewing the pods. Pressing Enter reveals three pods. If needed, you can terminate a pod by pressing Ctrl K. Notice how it gets immediately recreated. For more advanced actions, you can attach to containers using the A key or spawn a shell with the S key. Let's select a pod and press S to access the shell. I will ping Google.com. Works. Additionally, you can describe the highlighted resource by pressing D. Enter full screen with F or copy content to the clipboard with C. These shortcuts enhance your interaction with the application. Now, let's return to our deployment. To review the resource configuration, simply press YK. If you need to update the image used by our pod, you can do so effortlessly by pressing I. Let me demonstrate by providing an older image. Just uh, give it a moment. Pods are being terminated. There we go. The image has been successfully updated. Of course, you also have the option to directly edit the configuration using the E key. For example, let me set the replica count back to one. To check the logs, press the L key. Once you are viewing the logs, you can navigate through them using the arrow keys or page up page down keys. You can enable or disable auto scroll by pressing S uh, and toggle timestamps with T 
Additionally, you can toggle line wrapping with W. Uh, if you want to specify a time range, simply press uh, 0 to 6. I'll press 3 to display the last 5 minutes of logs. Furthermore, you have the ability to save the log output to a file by pressing Ctrl S. These features enhance your ability to manage and analyze your application logs effectively. Navigating between deployments, pods, and containers seamlessly is crucial for efficient management. Fortunately, you can swiftly switch between different resource types. Just press colon, and a small window will appear where you can type the desired resource type you want to inspect. Let's try switching to pods. Upon doing so, you'll notice the window title changed, indicating that you are now viewing pods. To access a list of all possible resources, type colon alias or press Ctrl A. Certain views like pod view allow you to sort resources. For instance, to sort by pod name, press Shift N. You can also sort by CPU usage with Shift C or by memory usage with Shift M. Additionally, filtering resources is effortless, just press slash. For example, to display only Redis pods, type slash and then Redis. You can also filter by labels. Let's press slash and specify that the app label should equal to Prometheus. Your filter will appear at the top allowing you to easily track your selection. To specify the namespace uh, your resource resides in, simply press colon and type pods ns and namespace name, for example, default. If you want to further refine your output, you can press slash and type min io to apply an additional filter. Keep in mind the resource type, namespace and filter are clearly displayed for reference. Let's switch back to displaying all pods for all namespaces. You can also perform an inverted filter by prefixing the name with an exclamation mark. For instance, typing slash, exclamation mark and then system will show all pods except those labeled as system. These features streamline resource management and facilitate efficient navigation within your cluster. Let's explore some other resources with our environment. First, I will type colon ns to access namespaces. This will provide a list of namespaces along with details such as their status and creation time. Pressing enter allows us to delve deeper into a specific namespace. Next, colon wk will lead us to workloads, where we can find daemon sets, deployments, replica sets, stateful sets, and more. Colon svc directs us to services, presenting information like namespace, service name, service type, IP, external IP, and port mapping. To examine ingresses, type colon ing. Here you'll find details such as the ingress name, class, host, address, and port. If we want to focus on deployments specifically, we can use colon dp. This view provides insights such as the number of replicas, ready versus desired, replicas updated to achieve the desired state, available replicas for users, and the duration the application has been running. For roles, use colon RO and for cluster roles, colon CR. Upon selecting a role, you can drill down to view permissions on a resource. To inspect role bindings, type colon RB or for cluster role bindings, use colon CRB. Let's filter by Nginx with slash nginx. This reveals that the ingress nginx service account holds the ingress nginx service cluster role. Now, let's examine the ingress nginx service account by pressing colon sa 
and filtering for Nginx with slash Nginx. This provides a comprehensive view of the permissions granted to the service account. To explore persistent volumes, use colon PV. Here you can view details such as capacity, access mode, recline policy and status. Persistent volume claims can be checked with colon PVC. By pressing U, you can see what is using a specific persistent volume claim. For config maps, let's type colon CM. Let's open one of them to inspect its contents. Similarly, secrets can be accessed with colon SEC. Let's open Gitea init. To decode the secret, press X. These commands allow for thorough exploration and management of various resources within your environment. If you are using Helm for your deployment, then you can access its functionalities by typing colon and then Helm. Let's select Grafana. This will display all application revisions. Uh, to get a description, press D. You can also check the configuration values passed to Helm during installation by pressing V. Pressing V again will show you all the values. Additionally, you can roll back to a previous release. Let's select revision 7 and press R. To switch the context, type colon ctx. Let's select k8s to connect to a different cluster. Now, let's navigate to cluster nodes by typing colon no. Selecting node 5 and pressing R will drain the node, uh, disabling scheduling on it. Let's wait a second while the pods are being evicted. Done. To bring the node back into service, press U for uncordon. Let's switch back to the previous cluster. Now, let's enter colon PU to get into Pulse's view. The Pulse view helps you gain a quick understanding of your cluster's overall health without needing to delve into individual resource details. It serves as a starting point for further investigation if you notice any anomalies or require more specific information. It shows resource count, resource utilization and events that happened within the cluster. Another interesting view is X-ray. Uh, I will type colon X-ray DP to inspect deployments. X-ray shows resources and their dependencies in a tree-like structure. Finally, to exit the application, you can either press Ctrl C or type colon Q. These features provide comprehensive insight into your cluster status and facilitate efficient management of resources. I hope you found this video helpful in unlocking the power of K9S for your Kubernetes management. Remember, K9S empowers you to visualize, manage and navigate your clusters with unmatched ease. Ready to unleash the K9S power? Head over to the K9S documentation linked in the description below to delve deeper uh, and unleash your inner Canonis master. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more exciting content on all things Kubernetes. Until next time, keep wrangling those clusters with efficiency and confidence.